Hey guys, uh, my name is Roger, RV Rental Housing. This is your two bedroom Royal. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and walk around, I'll give you a quick tour on the outside. Uh, so first things first, coming here, you're gonna notice you do have uh, electrical outlets. Uh, in order to run anything on the outside, just make sure you plug into power, which you will be before you move in. Uh, an outside grate for your furnace. So whenever you are running your furnace, just keep in mind, this will be blowing hot air. So try to watch yourselves in this area. Try not to block it. Try to stay away from it because it will get really hot. Uh, moving on forward, sliding glass entry door. You will have a set of steps here that will allow you guys to come in and out a lot easier. Uh, moving here, this is going to be actually entrance into the front uh, room here. An extra set of steps for you guys also. Uh, moving on, I do want to bring out the awning just so you guys can see it. There is a switch on the inside, and I'll show you that when we get a little further inside. Uh, walking here, you're going to see this guy here, your fresh water connection. So, uh, this RV does have the capabilities and does have a 40 gallon max capacity fresh water tank. Um, and actually, you fill this bad boy up here by just threading the water hose on, turning your water spigot on, and go ahead and letting it fill up. Uh, once it's all the way filled, it'll actually start making a big mess at you through this pipe here, letting you guys know it's all the way filled. Uh, in most cases, you guys won't be utilizing this uh, connection, you guys will be utilizing your city water connection. Uh, and underneath this uh, hidden lid here, we do have your propane cylinders. And I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off and show you exactly what's underneath. Your RV comes with two full propane tanks, both stationed on the front of the outside of your RV. There are four appliances that run off of propane tanks. The stovetop, the oven, the furnace, and you can also use propane for the water heater. But the water heater does have capability of running off electricity, as long as you keep the HTR switch off. When you use the gas in the propane tank, you'll need to swap them out. Swapping propane tanks. First, you want to go ahead and close this uh, guy here. Close your tank that you're going to be removing. Close it off. Then uh, your regulator in the middle will show red when it's completely empty. We're going ahead and moving this regulator off to the right hand side. So you're no now drawing from that second propane tank. Open that tank up and you're all good to go. Um, so as you see, they kind of meet in the middle. That regulator does regulate pressure coming inside. So let's go ahead and process with removing the t LP tank. Um, so first we'll remove the top wing nut. And then from here, you can go ahead and find your propane hose. Again, Lefty Lucy to remove it. Awesome. We can take the entire regulator off. Leaving the other one hooked up is not uh, harmful in any way. Go ahead and remove the crossbar. Take your LP tank off. Now putting it back up, super easy. Gonna go ahead and put it back on this uh, track here. Get it into place. Go ahead and grab your crossbar to keep it secure. And next we can go ahead and grab the regulator. Toss the regulator back into its appropriate position there. Go ahead and get your propane hose, righty tighty. And then from here you can go all finished up, go ahead and toss on your wing nut. Now once that's on, you can go ahead and put your cover back on and you're all good to go. So uh, one thing we do have here is gonna be actually access to the rear of your hot water heater. Um, in most cases, you won't need to be back here. Um, the only reason you'll be back here is if for any reason you call us, um, we ask you to get to the back axis of the hot water heater. This will be it here. Um, I'll just show you how to just remove it, just in case you guys do find yourself in that position. Um, really quick, thumb lock here, straight, and I usually like to give it a quick little tap. In here, so there's not much in here, just a quick overview. Um, thermostat switches here. One big thing to keep in mind is gonna be this switch right here. This switch is actually for your electric hot water heater. Again, this has the capabilities of a travel trailer, a camping RV, so you do have ability to run your water heater off electric and propane. Make sure this is on for your electric. Really easy, quick on, off. Uh, moving on here, you do have compartment doors. Uh, honestly, small storage for you guys underneath the bed, just for you guys. 
These are open and closed on a 751 key, small silver circular ring. Um, coming on here guys, we do have an outside shower for you guys to use here. Um, it's honestly, as long as you're hooked up to your city water connection, you have full access to this guy here. And they make it really convenient uh, in case you have any issues down here, which I'll go over now, is your uh, outside sewer connections. Underneath your RV are three tank deposits, each corresponding to an area within the RV. The kitchen, front bedroom bathroom, and back bedroom bathroom. All non-toilet waters, such as sinks and showers, can be run off via gray tabs. Pull to open, push to close. The black tabs are for your waste, which can be left closed and handled otherwise by waste management. Depending on your model, the black tank tab may be more obscured. And that is the last of the dump outs. Uh, moving on to this little piece here, there's really not much to go over. I know I mentioned earlier this freshwater connection. Um, honestly, about 99% of the time you'll be hooked into your city water connection, which goes directly to your water spigot that you have at home. Um, and then hooking this up, as you see, it's got a threaded end. You'll honestly just get your water hose, Thread it in here, you guys still thread it in right in there. Thread it in, turn on your water spigot on, and you guys will be all good to go. Honestly, in most cases, this will be set up before you guys even get in the trailer, so it may not be something you guys even need to play with. Uh, one thing to go over here, guys, is going to be your main uh, electrical connection. So the main power hookup for the RV is gonna be right here, 50 amp service for this uh, two bedroom, two bath. Um, honestly, same thing. This will probably be hooked up for you guys before you guys even step in. Um, but if for any reason you guys feel you have lost power, just make sure that uh, nothing's falling off, anything like that. Uh, moving on to the back. Again, not really much to go over here, but I did want to show you guys your cable and satellite hookups. Now, we don't really get involved with all this fun stuff. If you wanted to get a hold of your cable provider, they can kind of come out and assess the situation and get you guys all wired up for your satellite services. Uh, moving on to the front side, there's nothing else. Uh, so to be honest guys, that's just about sums it up for the exterior. Um, if you guys want to follow us inside, we'll go ahead and go over the inside stuff. So stepping in, the first thing you're going to see as you walk in here is going to be your main control panel here. Um, as you can see, a bunch of different light switches, um, lights, power light, light one, interior light. These two red switches here, honestly, you guys won't be utilizing these very much, but the reason to go over them, just so you guys are aware of what they're for, water pump switch. If you guys are utilizing the water from the actual auxiliary tank, you're going to need this switch here. Again, 99% of the time, you're gonna be hooked into your city water connection, which completely bypasses this switch here. Um, next one over is gonna be your switch for your hot water heater. So if you would prefer to run it on propane, turn the switch on. If you prefer to run it on electric, make sure this switch is off and your switch down at the water heater is turned on. Um, if for any reason this switch is on, it's going to uh, immediately wanna run on propane. So to conserve propane, leave it off. Make sure your outside one's on and run it on electric. Um, easy light switches, easy stuff there. Slide out one. You won't be dealing with any of the slide out switches. Our drivers will bring these slide outs in and out for you guys. And the last one to go over will be your awning. Now, super duper careful with this guy here. Um, I will say that these are super sensitive. So try not to leave it out um, if you're not gonna be around the trailer. Um, these things are great on a these things are great on a sunny day, but can act like a huge sail if they get any gust of wind under it. And we really don't want to have to charge you guys for a whole new awning assembly. Um, so awning, extend and retract. Again, guys, be very, very careful with this guy. Um, if you're not near it, bring it in. Uh, one of the things to go over with you guys will be the tank heaters here. Now this tank heater specifically is gonna only be used in the winter time. Now, um, if you guys do feel it's getting pretty cold, go ahead and kick that guy on. And what that will do is actually turn on and activate these heating tanks, at the heating pads at the bottom of the tanks, which prevents any freezing from happening. Um, but as you guys get close to the winter time, make sure to call us. We can kind of have some tips and tricks to make RV living a whole lot easier in the winter time. The monitor levels read the levels of the water and the waste tanks, but there are so many variables that can cause the sensors to incorrectly read levels. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us. 
So um, as we kind of move around from here, let's go ahead and start in our main area here. So walking in, you do have a 43 inch TV here. Again, get a hold of your cable provider for any satellite hookups or cable hookups. Uh, a majority of the, all of these TVs will allow you to pick up local channels, but um, all depending on the area you're at, area you are in um, is really a, depending on how many channels you'll get. So feel free to do an auto channel scan. Uh, if you want, we'll make a, actually we can probably get tie in the video, right? right. Well, we'll go ahead and in the next video, you sh we'll show you how to run an auto channel scan uh, to locate any local channels in your area without having a uh, internet or cable provider having to come out and uh, address the situation. So as you can see, first things walking in guys, uh, you do have your fire extinguisher right here. Also uh, 110 electrical outlet, as you do see it is labeled GFCI. And I'll actually go ahead and show you the reset as we get a little further back. But anything with this GFCI, keep in mind, it's all gonna be daisy chained together. So if you lost power in one of these, you probably lost power to all of them. And I'll show you how to reset that in just a sec. Uh, if you were to lose power on any one of these outlets that have that GFCI logo, uh, just make sure to come back here to your main reset. As you see right in the face of it, it's got two different switches. Let's go ahead and reset and you'll be good to go. Uh, directly underneath the smeared cabinet, you will find your breakers. Um, now, the way we open this guy up is actually going to be through this little, you can kind of feel these little tabs right here. Give it a good push on there. It's going to allow it to open up. And it's going to actually expose all of your different pressures. So here are all your 110 breakers. And then as you can kind of see, this is, will be your legend for all of the fuses up here. Um, if for any reason these are tripped, um, for training purposes, we'll, you'll kind of see it hanging out right below all these other ones. To trip it or reset it, I'm sorry, you'll knock it down, kick it back up. You should regain power. If you guys continue to have any power problems, constant breakers tripping, feel free to call us on our uh, tech line and we'll go ahead and kind of walk you through to find out what's going on. You have three main buttons on your thermostat that you will use. Zone changes the location in the RV where the temp is being set, being whether the master bedroom or the main area. System will determine whether the air is heat or AC, and mode will alter the level of intensity for airflow. When receiving your new trailer, the tanks are oftentimes sent completely empty, allowing for a plastic smell to accumulate throughout the trailer. Tank seasoning is a process of introducing water and chemical packets, the porta packs, into the tank to season for later use. Step on the flush pedal, count to 100, and drop in a tablet. You will need to season the tank every time you empty the black tank or your waste service company empties the black tank. The 4 to 5 gallons of chemical water will help dissolve waste and RV only toilet paper and also help reduce odors.